Let's open up our Bibles to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah 33. We've been talking about uh, prayer. Uh, this is a this is part. This is actually part three of my series series on uh, the power of prayer or pop. Okay, it's getting old. Yes. All right. Um, power of prayer. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about. Uh, prayer in the context of of just having our conversation with God be uh, really directed towards Him, centric around Him, uh, not around our desires, but around what what He desires, um, His will, His His focus. And then last week we talked about prayer that is really empowered by the Holy Spirit, an opportunity for us to 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 really live a life, you know, as followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, those of us who have confessed our faith in Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, this, uh, this third face, this third nature, it's, it's really hard to describe, but that part of God resides in us. And as a result, we can pray, we can have this dialogue with God that is supercharged with, with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Why not, right? And then today I'm going to talk about uh, this, this component of listening. The listening prayer, the art of hearing from God. Uh, it's going to be coming from Jeremiah 33, but, uh, but really it encompasses a whole series of chapters, uh, chapter 30 through 33, but we're just going to focus on one aspect of it. Let me share the story about uh, this, this one youth pastor. He, went, uh, he took his youth students uh, up, up into the mountains to go skiing, and uh, you know, you know how youth pastors can be. They're 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 trying to be cool with, with their kids and everything, right, Joseph? You, you know, the, uh, well, Pastor Paul is probably the exception. He's very mature and everything. But but here, this youth pastor, he's he's bringing his kids along, and they're uh, they're up on the mountains. They're getting ready to uh, go down uh, go down this hill, and this youth pastor sees uh, this this uh, actually he hears someone ahead of him yelling out, right, left, straight right, left, straight. And so this, uh, this youth pastor, he's, he's like, you know, I'm going I'm to mess with whoever he's talking to. So, he, so every time uh, this, this guy would yell out, right, he would actually yell out, left, right, left, straight, curve, right? And he's trying to mess with this guy. And then uh, finally, this youth pastor, pastor catches up with the guy who's, who's yelling out these instructions. And then that uh, that skier then turns around, and he uh, to to the um, youth pastor's surprise said, "Ski instructor, right?" I'm like, "Oh, I, I'm so sorry," but then at the same time, uh, the, the youth pastor was also amazed that this guy behind him was actually following every single direction that this uh, instructor was doing, and and he, he skied up to, next to that guy, and he looks upon him, and on on his shirt. It said, "Blind skier." Oh, man, he, the, the the youth pastor was just was just blown away by this. But this is such a a good illustration about the power of listening, right? Man, I, I, if you want to, um, I mean, with with this skier, this uh, this blind skier, he's able to uh, zero in on the instructor's voice to to such a degree that he's able to tune out all the other noises, all the other voices, and he just focuses on hearing on his, his cues and doing exactly what is being asked of him. Listening is one of those, um, one of those powerful traits, those powerful, uh, that, that secret to a really good marriage, the secret to, to so many different things, quite honestly. If you want to be uh, a good leader, you have to be a good listener. If you want to be a really good husband, for those of you who are husbands, right? The wives are like, you hear that? It's like, you, you got to be a good listener, right? Except for Daniel. He, he's great, man. <laughs> but, you know, if you really want to be a good friend, uh, you, you want to be a good listener. The power of listening, I mean, actively listening, is incredibly 
therapeutic, it's empowering, it's encouraging, and it does incredible things. We look at Scripture, and it, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of elements that basically say you need to, uh, you need to be listening to the Word of God, and uh, you need to be uh, meditating upon His Word and chewing upon it. You look at uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, the, uh, God ha- has uh, Jesus sharing this vision to the Apostle John and to each of these seven churches, and what, what does he conclude at the very end? To all those who have ears. Let them hear. Right? There's, there's this element of, of God saying, I've got something special I want to share with you. But let's look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33 takes place at, at, a, at a time that is actually quite, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, exciting. Right? This is, this is a season where uh, the... Jerusalem is being sieged by the Babylonians. It's around 588, 589 uh, BC. And, man, I mean, uh, let me just give you a, a quick rundown and, and kind of uh, zero in on, on this immediate context. So, the northern kingdom, southern kingdom were divided after King Solomon. You have uh, the northern kingdom, after a while, no good kings, then uh, being conquered by the Assyrians. The Assyrians came in. In fact, let me just show a quick map here. The, the Assyrians uh, up in the north came down, destroyed uh, the northern kingdom, which had no, no good kings. You, now you have this, this small little sliver of land uh, of the southern kingdom of Judah, really just of two tribes, two of the tw- 12 tribes, and they're, they're the last part remaining. You have the Babylonians now rising into becoming the new world power, they're wanting to come in and, and take over this entire uh, region, going after the Assyrians. The Egyptians realize what's going on, so they, they send uh, support up to back up the Assyrians. But then uh, Josiah, the, the, the last good king of, of Judah, steps in and says, no, we're, we're going to block off these Egyptians. They go, now suddenly, there's all this attention being brought upon Judah. Judah now becomes not only the focus of Egypt, not only the focus of Babylon, but all the neighboring nations. Like, wait a minute, what's this guy coming in and trying to mess up all these things that are going on? The Babylonians would eventually destroy the Assyrians. They would eventually destroy the Egyptians. Now the attention is brought upon Jerusalem upon Judah, and, and, the, uh, and Jerusalem was already conquered once. Babylon would then install a puppet king. The, this king would, uh, would pay tribute up, to, up until a certain point, and then uh, 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 finally got to a point, uh, Zedekiah, uh, this, the, literally this last king of Judah, steps in and says, you know what, I changed my mind. Uh, I'm not going, I'm going to revolt against you. Zedekiah went against the prophet Jeremiah and all that uh, him and all these other people were saying, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. Zedekiah still revolted against Babylon and Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar II basically said, that's it. I'm coming. 589, uh, 588 B.C., Jerusalem uh, was, was now being sieged, this time for the last time. Which brings us to this immediate context. Jeremiah chapter 33 essentially takes place while Jeremiah is literally uh, in, in this prison, this courtyard of a prison, where in a sense all the privileged prisoners would be held. They're, they're held in this, this one place, and all the while, all around them sounds of a battle. Babylon coming, uh, destroying everything, and, the, uh, and there's this sense of desperation. All the people in Jerusalem doing everything they can to hold back the, this, uh, this roaring army that's coming over, over, the, over the hills from the north. And it's just a matter of, I mean, Jerusalem would uh, last 18 months. 
Jeremiah chapter 33 takes place probably about a year before uh, Jerusalem falls and when the temple is uh, finally destroyed. This is a hopeless scenario, right? Everything's going to be lost. The people are desperate. But when you look at Jeremiah chapter, starting from chapter 30 on to 33, it's an unusually good message in the backdrop of such great despair. But let's just look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33 is, this mess- is, is essentially God's message of this future hope and restoration in the midst of this, this desperate and dark time. Starting from verse 1, I'm just going to break this down uh, uh, into three sections here. Just looking at the first nine verses. Verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still shut up in the court of the guard. If you want to know a little bit more about that context, go back to the previous chapter, 32, and and, and you'll get a a better sense of what's happening. But here, Jeremiah is in this uh, privileged prison, if you will. And God speaks to him for a second time. Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it, to, uh, formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. What an, an amazing message, right? So awkwardly positioned. Everybody, people are dying around Jeremiah. Jeremiah is probably like desperate, like, I told you guys, you, you don't revolt, surrender to, uh, to, to Nebuchadnezzar, and, and people are just uh, being killed left and right. But this is God's message. Uh, and if, if I were to uh, give you, you know, uh, the Raymond translation, right, of 2022, th- God's basically saying, Guys, do you have a moment? I, I, just want, uh, I just want to share this with you. I know you're kind of busy with, with this war and everything, but do you have a moment? Call to me, I've, I've, and I will share with you this wonderful message of, of what's to come. He basically, kind of, through Jeremiah, is saying, do you have a moment? Can we talk? But let's continue on, starting from verse 4. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city and the houses of the kings of Judah that were torn down to make a defense against the siege mounds and against the sword. They are coming in to fight against the Chaldeans and to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I shall strike down in my anger and my wrath. For I have hidden my face from this city because of all their evil." Now, this doesn't yet sound encouraging, right? I mean, you're, you're looking at this like, this is a, a grim picture that he's painting. But what God has been saying to, through Jeremiah to these people, to, uh, literally to, all, uh, to the entire southern kingdom, this is all you're doing. The situation that you find yourself in, the reason why you have this army of, of, of these Babylonians coming in, this is all you're doing. I've been calling you for years and years since the time of, of King Josiah, I, uh, the last good king who would, who would try to reform the entire nation and try to bring everybody back to, to live a life that is as pleasing before the Lord. Ever since that time, you have decided to walk away from me. I'm going through the, uh, the, uh, the book of Jeremiah uh, in my, on my live stream, 7 o'clock every morning. Uh, and, and just in the first four chapters, what is God saying? I'm, I'm appealing to you. Come back to me. You, you're, you're going in the wrong direction, and, and, and you've been doing these uh, horrific things, and, and the word whore is used so often to, to really paint how bad of a direction the people has been going in. And, he, and, he's, and he's saying just... In the midst of all this, I still want you to come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. But yet at the same time, this is all you're doing. And right this moment, God is reminding them, this is all you're doing. You know, uh, he's, he's, this is what God is seeing. 
He sees all this rubble. He sees all these people trying to gather the broken uh, homes and, and the palace uh, of the king that has been destroyed and broken down. They're taking the rubble and trying to uh, patch up the, the, hall, uh, the walls to kind of hold back the enemy in this last-ditch effort to try to keep all the bad, uh, bad guys outside. But yet all the while, as they're cleaning this area, they need a place for all the dead. Because where are the cemeteries? Where are the places that they bury the dead? It's outside, where the enemies are. So they can't go outside. So they're taking the dead bodies and piling it up in the places where they, uh, they emptied out all this, these massive stones. And God is saying, this is all you're doing. This is, this is your, your doing. You put yourself in this situation. And because of such evil in, in my eyes that my people have been doing, I have to hide my face. I cannot, I, 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 I'm lifting my favor away from you. Do you feel that today, some of us? Some of us that are going through difficult times? What do our prayers sound like right now? What do the prayers sound like for these people at this moment? The last thing that they want to do is hear all these things from God. The thing on their heart, I'm sure, in this desperate moment is, Lord, I, uh, I need a little bit of help right this moment, right at this second. Uh, uh, and the last thing they want to hear, or maybe, maybe, the, maybe a, a, in a, a sliver, a, a part of them, is actually wanting to hear how this is going to end. And this is what God is saying. I've got a message for you. I know how this is going to end. Watch this. Starting from verse 6. Behold, I will bring to it health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance and prosperity and security. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and the fortunes of Israel and rebuild them as they were at first. I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me. I will forgive and I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. And this city shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and a glory before all the nations of the earth who shall hear of all the good that I do for them. They shall fear and tremble because of all the good and all the prosperity I provide for it. I mean, quite honestly, you look at chapters 30 through 33, it is all about that. It is all, I mean... In the midst of this uh, siege, dark times, imminent uh, defeat, God is uh, saying above all this, there's going to come a day where I, it, and, it, and I hope you, you realize this, there's going to come a day when God is going to restore everything, everything to its original condition. Think of how small our prayers can be on a daily basis. What do we pray for? We pray for, Lord, fix this. Lord, I, I, I'm going through a, a challenging season. Can you fix this one section? But what God wants to do and what God is revealing in, in, this, in this passage, in these chapters, is that, guys, I want to restore it to what it was designed to be. What is he talking about here? He's talking about restoring, restoring his kingdom Going all the way back to King Solomon when, when the kingdom was united. He's talking about reuniting the northern kingdom Israel and the southern kingdom Judah and, and uh, uniting them as one kingdom. He's talking about restoring their, their prosperity. He's talking about uh, bringing this, this great fame and favor upon them such that all the nations all around them will once again fear this town this place of Jerusalem. They will once again look upon Jerusalem and say, that is the place of this mighty king that we've heard, a mighty, mighty God that we've heard all these stories about. He's not wanting to just fix our own little thing. Are we listening to what God is trying to say to us on a regular basis? He's saying, I want to go beyond your little prayer. I want, to, I want to restore you. I want to restore your marriage. I want to restore your marriage to what it's supposed to look like. 
found in Ephesians chapter 5. I want to restore your relationship with your kids and, uh, and the kids' relationship with their parents to what is uh, talked about in, in, the, uh, in the fifth commandment and in, in Ephesians chapter 6. I want to restore these re broken relationships that you have with uh, the people around you where you, you're, you're hating one another. You don't li listen to one another. You don't even hear one another. I want to restore the culture to the point where people are once again having civil discourse instead of this, this crazy world of, of just trying to write people off. This is, this is God's focus here. Are we hearing that when we come before the Lord in prayer? When we, come, when we just stop all that we're doing and we want to have this conversation with God, are we saying, Lord, what would you like for me to hear? God, God is saying to each and every one of us, you know, have you had enough? Have you had enough of this, 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 this life that, that, of mediocrity, this life where you're just struggling and running in this rat race? Have you had enough yet? Because I've got a message for you. We often refer to, to Jeremiah 29, 11, right? Future and hope. Guess what? God has an even greater plan. Future and hope is, is, is one thing, but his larger plan is I want to restore everything to what it was and then restore it to even better condition. Because we read in Revelation... This, this future state, this, uh, this new Jerusalem that's going to be coming down uh, where uh, the Lord, the Father in heaven, will reside with his people. He's talking about all this, and he, and he, uh, and he gives us a sneak peek through Jesus Christ. He, he allows his son to come, come on earth and, and to walk amongst us, to, to then die for our sins and and, and then for his life to be glorified when he's resurrected and he ascends to heaven as evidence of, of God's power and, and his, his promise to say, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm coming back to restore everything. You just wait. I'm coming back to restore everything. But we don't pay attention to that. We are like Zedekiah. We are like the people of this time. They did not want to hear from, from Jeremiah. They did not want to hear these words. They didn't want to hear surrender to Babylon because God's got a bigger plan. They didn't want to hear this, this, this message of repentance, like, what do we need to repent for? But yet God continually calls upon them come back to me, come back to me, come back to me. This message still echoes today. He's calling each and every one, every one of us here, every one of us online, come back to me, come back to me. When we come into prayer, in light of, uh, this, uh, in light of Jeremiah chapter 33 here, what do we see? In prayer, what are we listening for? When we come into, into this uh, and this relationship with God, when we have this conversation, we, there, we gather together here for really two reasons. Let's be honest. If, you have, if, if, if your reason for being here is outside these two reasons, you're here for the wrong reason. Number one, we're here to worship God. We're here to give our very best before the Lord, and we're here to say, Lord, you are, you are the only one that I want to love. You are the only one I want to, I want to give honor and praise to. Number two, the second reason why we're here is because we want to hear from God. We want to open up his word and say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm ready to listen to what you have to say. What, what is it that you need me to hear? These are the only two reasons, really, why we gather together. Number one, when we come into prayer, when we have this, uh, this in a sense, this listening prayer, what are we listening for? We're listening for the hope. Lord, I, I just want to hear your voice. I just want to, I want to be like that blind skier. I don't want to hear all these, these messages of hope, uh, these, these, these powders that you could take to, for better health, uh, the, this, uh, this, this 
financial plan that's going to uh, set me up for life or uh, set my kids up for life. The hope is found in this conversation that we have with the Lord that goes beyond what we can ever imagine, what we can ever see. Or as, as, as the Lord is saying in verse 3, what we can ever know, right? We think we know, right? We think we, we Lord, I know exactly what I need, and this is why I'm praying, and I'm going to lay my request before you. And the thing is, he's got a, a hope that is so much bigger than ours, so much bigger than what we can ever imagine, what we could ever know. The other thing that we're listening for, that we ought to be looking, uh, listening for, is this restoration. Restoration that goes beyond all that we have destroyed. Our, our sinfulness, our anger, our lusts, our, our brokenness. God wants to come in, and in this relationship, he wants to restore us. John chapter 10, verse 10, I talk about this all the time. Uh, Jesus would say, you know, I, uh, not only he, he came, to, uh, came, to ser- uh, came not to serve, but to be served, but he also uh, talks about, you know, I, I am that good shepherd. I came to give life, and life in its fullest. He wants to restore us to that fullness of life. So when we sit down and we have this uh, time of prayer, are we listening to, Lord, what are you going to restore in my life? And then look, finally, I think this is so important. I mean, at least it's important to me. In this time of listening to the Lord, we ought to be listening for where is the location of his favor, right? We think... Lord, your favor is going to be poured out upon me when I'm over here at my job and, 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 and this, is, this is the one I interviewed for and this is the one that I, I studied all these uh, years for and you're going to come and bless me, right? Go over here, Lord. But well, then God may be saying, no, it's not over here. It's, it's over there. What is he saying in, in, this, in this prophecy, in this, uh, in this promise here? The favor is going to be restored back in Jerusalem where, where, where my people are going to be reunited together. They are going to be feared. My name is going to be feared once again. My favor is going to be poured out upon them. I'm going to restore them to, to beyond prosperity. And my people are going to be legendary. But that is where the favor is going to be found. Are we listening for that? You know, it's hard. It's hard, again, looking at this context, uh, when, when we're in such difficult times, uh, the, the hardest thing for us to do is to stop and listen, right? I don't know if you've ever played paintball. Anybody play, play paintball? It, it is like, thank you. It's like one of the scariest things to do, right? You, you, you have this little, little, uh, little gun that, that shoots a little... Uh, Little wads of paintball, uh, uh, paintballs, and, and a little soap, uh, colored soap, and hits you, and it splatters, and actually it, it hits really hard, man. So uh, a friend of mine and I, we we we, we went to uh, this one place, and uh, it's an indoor place. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. It smelled, and and it uh, just it was the worst experience, but. It was also really fun because we were, we got paired up with uh, with this other team and, and these guys were, were like I mean we were just like scattered all over the place except for my friend and I we were working as a team and we were we were we were uh, going after the other team and we were winning and then suddenly there's this uh, new group that walks in this paramilitary team they were all uh, decked out in camo and everything they had their own specialized equipment and uh, we're like oh my gosh. We're, we're, we're going to die, you know, and, and so, so sure enough, you know, my, my ragtag team against this, this, you know, special ops team, and we're, we're, uh, we're, we're set into this, this, uh, this, this indoor place, and one by one, my team was getting picked off uh, down to the point where, where I'm literally, my friend and I are like uh, in, on opposite pillars, and we're like pinned down because, you know, really professional guys, they're just like just shooting uh, rapid fire, and we can't even do like lift our heads up. Right? And, 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 and we're pinned down, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I just could hear the footsteps of the, of the other team kind of like and, uh, flanking us. And I'm like, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Just, just kind of hold out. Buddy, are you, are you? Oh, he just got taken out. 
uh, right? And I'm, I'm like down to the last moment. I'm like, uh, when is this going to end, right? Okay, that is Jerusalem at this moment, right? You know, honestly, in that moment when I'm, when I'm surrounded and I'm, I'm, I'm imminent defeat is approaching, the last thing I want to hear from God is, there's going to be this future state. You're going to be, you're going to be a winning team and everything, but you, you put yourself in this situation, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, the last thing I want to hear is that, right? But, but that's exactly what's happening here. Jerusalem is, is under siege. They're, these are the last moments. The enemy defeat is coming, and, and God is saying in the midst of all this, and we got to listen. God is giving them this, this powerful hope. Yes, you guys put yourself in this, but man, do you understand? I've got this bigger picture. You're going to be restored. You're going to have this great hope, and, and, and you're going to be this united kingdom of, of believers and, and uh, followers of this, of this kingdom lifestyle, and you're going to be great. You know, maybe if I heard that message while I was pinned down, maybe I could have just accepted that defeat with a little bit of grace, right? You know, as they're surrounding me, as they're pelting me with uh, their, their paintballs, I could be like, I'm going to be victorious, right? But that's, that's such, that is the big challenge here. That is my challenge to all, each and every one of us. We live in dark times, right? We, we live uh, with such, such chaos on the verge of possibly World War III, nations warring against nations, earthquakes, hurricanes, and all this. And what God is saying and challenging us, can you just be still? Just kind of stop and just be still and listen to what I have to say. You know, in, in the midst of all the prayers that we want to lift up, can we just pause and just say, Lord, Lord, I'm going to just shut my mouth. And I want to hear you. I want to hear your promises. I want to hear this future state that I'm going to be in. Right? Let's bow our heads just for a moment. And I know that it's going to be hard. But let's just be still. If you, have, if you came here with an agenda with a prayer request, with, you know, some, uh, with a broken heart. Put that all to one side for just a moment. And let's just come before the Lord and let's just hear his voice. Be still. Know that he is God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this reminder of your powerful voice that speaks to us. And Father, I pray that, that we would just quiet all the voices, all the noise, and set aside time to just be still in your presence. And Father, I pray that your very next words will be exactly the words that we need to hear. Father, we want to listen with our spiritual ears. Ears that are tuned to your voice. Not to the ways of the world, but only to you. That sweet whisper, that quiet voice, revealing the greatest of plans. And Father, I pray that out of all this, that truly we would be transformed. We would be given that hope. We would see that future, the future with our Lord Jesus Christ, the future 
of the coming kingdom, the future where our Lord comes amidst the clouds to retrieve his own. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name.